we do have a couple people talking about or asking about registering a tartan. Um, mm-hmm. So we have one asking, uh, what is the cost of registering a tartan, um, or what fees that there would be <coughs> with that, and what is the process? Sure, it's not tough. No. Um, anybody can register a tartan. You go to the uh, Scottish Tartan Registry.gov.uk, I believe is the website, mm-hmm. um, or Tartan Register.gov.uk. And you basically, you log in, you create an account, and you're going to give them the details of the tartan. So they're going to want the thread count, the sequence, the, you know, the numbers and the thread colors kind of thing. They're going to want to know if there's any uh, meanings or rationale for the tartan. They're going to want to know what the name is, what category, you know, category it falls under, whether that's um, name, personal, business, or, or corporate, yeah, I think. Corporate. Like, yeah, there's like a bunch of different Fashion. weird categories. Yeah. Um, yeah. You submit all that stuff. You pay them, I think it's like 80 quid or 90 quid, something like that, um, which is right now about 120, 130 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to take your money. Then they go away for a couple weeks. Um, they send it to the likes of Brian Wilton, Peter McDonald, a bunch of the Tartan scholars over in Scotland, show them the design and say, hey, is there anything else out there like this? They have the, the separate meeting of the minds where they all do their own little research shoot it back and say, nope, it's an original design, great. And if it's nothing oddly named or there's nothing odd about it, they'll just give you the old rubber stamp, send you your certificate, and off you go. Yeah, they're looking for certain points of difference between your design and existing tartans. I forget, you, you told me once away there's like how many... There's no s- magic number. It's okay. really a... In heraldry there is, <clears throat> but yes, in it's, tartan... It's the rough, you know, does it look different enough from 10 feet? Is okay. it... You can't okay. take Royal Stewart, change, you know, the middle thread count of the pivot of white, six white in the middle, change it to seven or eight, and it's a new tartan. No, you can't do that. Right. It has to be a reasonable difference um, to register the tartan. And it has to be a a name that they find acceptable to be able to register it. Yeah, the... Um, Clan McEvil the, is the one that comes say, to the, mind. The Clan McEvil is your... That's still your best example of that. Yeah. Um, yeah go it was a, uh, uh, a group from the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, basically just a, a loose group of friends who jokingly called themselves Clan McEvil. And Joel Noaker was the uh, the head of Clan McEvil. He's the guy who started it. We designed a tartan for him. We went to register it, and we registered it as Clan McEvil. And the register came back and said, no, you can't do that. Right. Um, it's You can't say clan in the register and have it accepted. Right. So it, it went through as a, I think it was a corporate tartan, and we we have quotes around clan um, to be able to get around their thing. That's so. e- that's a really easy. That's that's a low bar though. Yeah, pretty in much in a way. You know, what I mean, I think a lot of the information they're collecting is for historical purposes. It's just so recording. That, it. Yeah, you don't yep. have to have a background. You don't have to have a meaning to all the colors. I mean, people will say like a tartan. You know, the the green stripes represent the forests of my homeland, and the blue stripes represent the the river the where my wife stuff. died. You know. You don't need any of that. That's Most of that is lore. A lot of the times when you encounter a historical tartan, people will tell you their stories about what the threads mean, and it's not true. Um, so you don't have to have some big, huge backstory or a bunch of documentation for your tartan. You just have to make sure that it is distinct enough. Yeah, and the original the- tartans had no meaning to them. The McDonald tartan was just like, oh, hmm, like that one. Yeah. Okay, I'll call it McDonald. Okay, done. The earliest recorded... Um, Example of a tartan with thread counts and colors meaning something was, uh, who is it, the uh, Nova Scotia tartan up in Canada in 1953. Hmm. That is the earliest recorded tartan that actually has color meaning and whatever. Okay. Um, it's a thing now yeah, very um, where almost, I'd say almost everyone who weaves a tartan, I'd say 80 plus percent of the people that, that uh, design tartans and register them now, have some kind of meaning ascribed to the colors. Yep. Um, our firefighter tartan, as an example, our firefighter tartan in the pivots, which is where the design flips, it's the mirror image of itself. Um, and the one pivot is 343 three for the 343 firefighters that died on 9 11. Now, that is a strong emotional you know, uh, thing yeah, in the tartan. So there is meaning associated with it, it creates a deeper emotional connection with people to the tartan but originally there was no meaning it's right. that looks pretty i like that one right right um what was there a point i was gonna make um Sorry. the no i was gonna say the uh the the time frame actually is pleasing for me to hear because i was assuming they would take months 
to hear back a few from, weeks from the gurus to, to make sure they approve it. So a few weeks is great. I'm used There's to only if I had to guess an average, I'd say I, I got the emails from the register with you know all the new tartans that are coming out. OK, so once once a week, once every other week, there'll be a day where I'll get 10 emails okay. of here's all the new tartans and they're all like right in a row. So it's somebody just literally just monkey punching the stuff approved. Approved, approved, approved okay. in the computer. So I'm assuming the register is giving batches of designs to the different people to look up, you know, uh, uh, research, make sure there's nothing nefarious about it, and then hand back to the register, and then the register just rubber stamps everything. You know what I'm imagining now? I'm imagining this uh, control room in Edinburgh Castle that's kind of like NASA, and you have all these guys in... in Highland dress with their tweeds and their and their Balmorals and their kilts on, with slide rules, and they're doing the Apollo 13 thing, like you know, like giving the guy the thumbs up as soon as they get the equation right. It's like, it's a go. The tartan, the tartan may launch now. It's much, much more disappointing. Okay. In reality, it's not as dramatic as Apollo 13. Nowhere okay. near. All right. Okay. It's. Yep. Looks fine. Well. I can't, I can't do a Scottish accent good. So they're all from the South. It's better uh, you do that than try a Scottish accent yeah, and mess it yeah. up like I do. So yeah. it's much more, you're more respectful <laughs> yeah. in not I, trying. I'm very respectful of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All the time. All the time. Yeah. That's my cornerstone. There you go. So yeah, it's, it's not hard it's to do. Not my um, but you do want to make sure you have the design solid. You want to make sure you like it. Make sure you have looked at it for a long time. I always say put it on your refrigerator, like get a color printout and just leave it there on display. So that like six months from now, you don't come back, well, even just a few weeks, come back and you're like, uh, I don't like it as much as I thought I did. Now, you can amend it, but they oh, would charge you to amend that's it. That's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. So you could it's, change it on the fly? Yeah. Sort of? I had okay. a design Irish Heritage. I designed at the same time as American Heritage, same time as a bunch of others, back in the 2005, I believe. Um, and I never had it woven. And then when I eventually did have it, went to get have it woven, I was like, yeah, this design isn't really that good. So I tweaked it. And sent okay. them an email and said, okay, hey, just so you know, this tartan is different. You know, it's it's from way back when. I never did it. This is what the design is now. And they emailed me back and said, okay, we can record that. It's going to be 100 bucks." And I was like, mm, nope. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it wasn't worth it to you. But nope. if it's if it's a, if it's a, uh, an important emotional project for a group, that would be worth knowing that they have the yeah, option but if something goes wrong. I was more annoyed because the red the point of the register, when when the Scottish Tartan World Registry and the STA got together and said, look, we want to push for a governing agency, for an official government body to do this. Their point, the, the purpose is to record existing tartans and catalog them for okay. eternity so that there is an existing record of tartans. So why do you have to pay twice? So, well, not, not necessarily why do I have to pay twice, but my point is like, but the design was never woven and this is what I am marketing as this thing, as the designer. This is what it is now. Okay. And they're like, well, just pay us more money. And I'm like, no, you're you're wrong now because it's it was never done. This okay. is what it is. So so it, you're, you're paying them for the privilege of amending... A design that I never did, which right. I paid them for originally. And they would, and, and you're, you're paying them for the privilege of them correcting their own database. Yes. Okay. So they don't look wrong. That is kind of weird. Now you think yeah. about it. Yeah. When you think about it from that angle, I get the logic of it. It's no, we're doing work. So pay us money. My logic is, right. but your database, which you want to be right as the register is now wrong. Mm -hmm. So here's how to make it right. Pay us money. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Anyway, go for it. Indeed.